What is going on guys? We are back with another video today and we are going to be talking about the Packers draft class for pretty much the final time basically ever on this channel outside of the sarcastic joke here and there of wow thank god we didn't go for a receiver or an inside linebacker in the first three rounds am I right? When we get destroyed on the ground game and have no one to pass to. Uh, day one was an it was like okay if I knew it was going to be an indicator of what the rest of the draft is going to be like, I would have been even more mad. And I was already kind of like not happy. I wasn't mad. I just wasn't happy about it. You know, day one is easily the best day of the entire class, which tells you something about that for the Packers. Day two, I don't even, I don't even know what to tell you. We we had a video for that. Check it out. Probably go more in depth over there on that. But we took a running back at least a round early. Once again, I can kind of understand the philosophy of. It doesn't matter what the pundits say because at the end of the day, there was some other running backs that did go a little higher than they were projected after the Packers. There's a decent chance Dylan might have actually been, you know, as the power back needs, if somebody wanted a power back badly, he could have went very similar. So as much as it looked like a reach from the Packers, it wasn't as bad as some people are seeing it as. It's just not the position the Packers needed. I get it's very obvious that the Packers are going to be running the ball a lot more next season, like a ton more. And if they aren't, I don't know what to tell you. I The front office needs to be completely replaced instantly. If it works out, I guess, fair enough. But right now, it is a stacked deck against them. And then they took a tight end that's basically a freaking fullback. Uh, he's got decent hands. Not a great route runner. Obviously not. Well, he's, an, he's a decent route runner. A little flashy at times, I guess. I don't know why I said not a great. He's, he's actually decent. Uh, but not very fast. More of a blocker, it seems. And then uh, day three, when you thought it couldn't get worse, it did. It it did. Of course, with the trade up for Jordan Love, no fourth round pick. Where you could see there was a couple of players that definitely would have been there for need. The Vikings, ironically, had probably a top five pick, a top five draft class in the entire league, while the Packers had the worst. I you I was saying to bottom five. You know, it's kind of a fight between the Eagles. Eagles did some things in day three that were very productive, including the trade for Marquise Goodwin, which is already more than the Packers have done in the entire offseason for uh, Rodgers, let alone uh, just tonight or you know this weekend for the draft. And the Packers take Kamal Martin, a linebacker, a big guy, a little bit on the slower side. Ironically, almost feels like a, almost a Blake Martinez cologne, which I suppose for depth isn't the worst thing. I'm just glad that they finally took a little bit of need. Then they take uh, John Runyon, which was probably the second best pick of the entire draft class for us. The one pick that wasn't really a crazy reach either. Uh, definitely could see some, uh, what is it called? I think his family has a little bit of NFL ties. Definitely could see some snaps in the season. Probably the number one player uh, when it comes to an injury on the Packers team to step up into a starting role. Don't hate the pick. It's just when you look at the rest of the class where it was like, okay, you know, a guard. We got a lineman. Finally, probably need to tackle a bit more because uh, Rick Wagner, is he really the answer? And uh, not even just that, but once again, injury at the tackle position for most of the league is a problem specifically for the Packers over the year, uh, the years. Then you get a center. Okay, I get it, right? Uh, Corey Lindsley's contract situation, it could be a guy, he could be one of the candidates for being let go considering uh, the cap situation might become one of need soon enough <laughs> as, as uh, we know that uh, the money is going to get tight with the re-signings that might include Aaron Jones. We don't know yet because A.J. Dillon was definitely a, uh, a, a name that might draw suspicions about uh, letting him hit free agency. Definitely would assume one of them, if not both of them, could be gone uh, and... The center position probably will be one that will be vacant. Uh, I'm not a huge fan. The guys, I guess centers don't need to be super athletic, but I don't know. Uh, he's, it's not a terrible pick, I guess. It's it's a late-round pick. It's When you get to these picks, it doesn't matter as much, it seems, but that's why you go for a wide receiver. It's a guy, let's say you didn't go over the first five rounds, which we didn't. Shocker. Uh, you know, grabbing a wide receiver here is pretty low risk, pretty potential high reward. You see a lot of of uh, wide receivers that are some of the best in the league going in the later rounds. I believe Donald Driver was either a late sixth or an early seventh. Actually, he might have been like right at the end of the seventh round, if I'm not mistaken. 
you don't even take the chance just for the history we've had with later round wide receivers is insane. The greatest wide, well, not the greatest, but quote unquote, the deepest wide receiver class potentially ever. And you don't even take one with going into the offseason with the at least second worst receiving situation in the league. You can look at tight end. We didn't really replace someone that's better than Jace. I think he's a complimentary guy, but I mean, I don't know. I <laughs> Let's go on to, what do you know, another lineman, Simon Stepaniak, if that's as even his name, probably won't be able to hear his name too much, benched, you know, 37 reps, which is nice, uh, seems strong, it's one of his uh, strong suits as well, seems like he actually maybe could be even better uh, as the guard, I, I like the guard picks, kinda, because guard, you know, we do have Elton Jenkins, but he has been known to be able to move around a little bit, and uh, maybe plays tackle for all we know, uh, in the future, I doubt it more likely to be a center than a guard, but we I like uh, the fact that uh, Elton Jenkins can definitely move around, so the two guards aren't the worst picks in the world. I would like one of those picks to probably be a tackle, but that's fine. And then Vernon Scott, I could not find a single sausage on other than the fact that he's 6'2", which I like those bigger uh, athletic guys, uh, especially for the Packers who uh, just don't play good coverage anyways, but at least if you're strong enough, you can try to press at the line and let that great, great pass rush that we developed, well, developed, trade, basically signed in free agency uh, to go after the guy. And then for the final pick, Jonathan Garvin, a pass rusher. It actually seemed decent, but not a position of need in the slightest. Uh, he's rated as a backup slash special teamer. Don't see him too... Well, maybe he's an okay special teamer. Uh, only player in the... Uh, maybe one of two players in the uh, day three for the Packers that actually even has a comp grade because he was scouted enough to have one, uh, which is uh, comped to uh, Torre from the, the Colts, which isn't a terrible comp. I like that. Uh, but one of your best picks in the draft being a seventh-round pick is probably not a good sign. Once again, I didn't really look too much into this. I didn't even watch the draft for day three. I barely watched it day two because of how mad I was with the team Overall, this draft class has got to be one of the worst I've ever seen as a Packers fan in at least a decade. I mean, we had a draft class with Derek Sherrod at the number one spot for us, but the rest of the class wasn't absolutely terrible. This one, outside of Love, who I, once again, have a decent 50-50 shot of thinking he might never gain the starting job in Green Bay ever, is the best pick, basically, kind of. I mean... It's not looking good. This is this is a draft that is going to define the front office, and it's going to be one of those drafts that you look at, why didn't we see it sooner, even though most Packers fans right now are calling for their jobs. Uh, why didn't we see this sooner? How the hell are they still in office? we seen oh, in office, sounds like a government job, but uh, we seen it last year where it was a little peculiar of a draft too. You need wide receiver. Last year was a little bit fair, you know, fair enough. Got some guys that look like they could be developable pieces. We had injuries similar to this year, which maybe that swayed them a bit. Uh, fair enough, you know, give them another chance. Maybe don't spend too much high picks in free agency. There's a lot of need or, um, in the draft. We have a lot of needs. I'll, I allowed it, right? I allowed it. This year, it was a clear cut. Those receivers aren't working. Best case scenario is EQ is the guy. And even then, he looked a little raw still, even though he was youngster anyways. But I get the guys are kind of young for the most part. You got to draft someone. I don't care. You see the Broncos took so many wide receivers. They took Tyree Cleveland right at the end of the seventh. There is nothing wrong with that pick. That pick is an amazing one. One of my favorite of the drafts. I loved uh, of the draft. I love Tyree Cleveland. Just for the speed. You know, the Packers don't have a burner. Best case scenario, worst case scenario, you let the guy run streaks. And you, you maybe draws the safety down every once in a while. You put him in. He's kick returner, special team. I don't know. But he's better than taking all these random players that are probably unlikely to even see the roster uh, in September, if we even have a damn league. <laughs> what is going on? I don't get it. I don't know. Uh, I try my best to get this to 10 minutes and uh, let me know how you think I did. <laughs> but one thing I do want to say is the Ravens. Oh my, that is filthy. The Ravens are just, it's like the Ravens play franchise. And they're like, like once again, we don't know. Maybe the Packers drafted five straight up winners. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter what position you choose. If they're good players, it's a good draft. But the Ravens got need. They got good value at pretty much every pick. 
They got depth at positions they were weak at. They did so well in the draft. It's crazy. The Vikings, I could say the same for, took some big names that a lot of people would have thought would have went earlier. The Bears, honestly, they did pretty damn. I would almost say the Bears did better than the Packers with their lesson picks. That's, that's how crazy it is. The NFC North obviously smoked the Packers. The Packers were like an like a D, like a D. I only give it a D because Jordan Love for the future, I guess, is an okay pick. Even though I'm 50 50 on it. While everyone else in the uh, NFC North, I would give at least a B plus, right? I'd say the Lions, once again, pick three, could have traded down, got a little bit more, and still got Akuda. The Bears maybe didn't need Cole Komet, but they took a good player at least. And then the Vikings, I mean, they maneuvered the draft like, you know, the Patriots would, really. They did really well. And uh, overall, the Packers disappoint me. I can't say I'm excited for the NFL season, but it's going to be one of the most interesting ones, assuming we once again have one. Uh, but anyways, if you guys did enjoy, leave a like on the video. Maybe subscribe. Follow me on Twitter, Drumpy Care. Check out the second channel, PK or Plays. I want to commit to a stream tomorrow. I don't know if I will, but you guys will know. First thing in the community tab, that's the best place to look. And uh, we will have a rebuild Monday. I don't know of what team, so let me know that as well. And I would assume this is going to be the last video for the today. We'll have two tomorrow Titans uh, stats and awards. And we'll definitely do another video where uh, maybe we do some th sort of sim with the draft class. If you have any ideas you want to see me do for the draft content, let me know in the comment section below. And ultimately, hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend. Thanks for watching. Hope you come back for next video. But until next video, see ya!